Hello Christian friends and welcome back to Evangelical Platform, a YouTube channel dedicated to preserving the gospel in a complex, messy, postmodern world. Today, friends, to be fair, is one of the most amazing days of my life. This morning, I was busy researching uh, for Professor Bob Yarbrough on the renaissance of Bultmann scholarship in South Africa as I started reading his fantastic book, uh, Clash of Visions. And while I was busy doing that and looking at some recent Bultmann scholarship in South Africa, a couple of uh, South Africans who's done work on Bultmann and being also a bit, you know, sad about it, I received a text message that I never expected. It came from an atheist in South Africa who wanted to inform me of a remarkable thing that happened in his life. Now, just to paint the picture for you, this guy in 2011 was a student and he wrote a splash newspaper article in South Africa that was published and the progressives and the atheists just absolutely loved him for doing this because it really humiliated the church. And what I want to do is I want to read you a section of that article he published as an atheist. And then after I've read that, I want to read you the text message that he sent me today. So here we go. A week ago on Reformation Sunday, I ran out of church. It was an intimate evening service and the pastor shared some nice thoughts on leadership with a small group of churchgoers. But when the time for communion arrived, he announced that the format was going to be different. Each of the 15 churchgoers had to come individually to the, pul to the pulpit where the communion would be served to them one by one. I looked around anxiously to try to gog the reaction of the congregation. No one seemed mortified. I sat silent for a while and watched volunteers one by one get up to receive communion. Each time the pastor's hand was on their shoulder as he would hand them the piece of bread and then pray. After three volunteers each took their turn, I realized the hourglass was empty. I was faced with a choice. When the pastor prayed for the fourth churchgoer, I grabbed my, my Bible and ran out of church. Outside I jumped in my car and drove off. And while I was driving with Bob Dylan as loud as possible over the speakers, I thought, it's quite ironic that my middle name is Peter. I am 23 years old and convinced that God does not exist. I am also a member of the Dutch Reformed Church and I do not intend to leave. I attend two worship services every Sunday, although I no longer sing or pray together during services. In my student years, this house of cards collapsed. I studied the Bible more intensively from a historical scientific framework and made some startling discoveries. The virgin birth story is based on a translation error. The author of the Hebrew letter was dishonestly using his psalm text to reinforce his argument. Matthew committed plagiarism. Luke's mess with dates left a hole in Jesus' birth story. The faith of no Christian who made such discoveries is ever the same again. I tried to save what I was able to save by warming up to liberal theologians. But in the end, you find yourself on a slippery slope that just pulls you further down. Last month, a book appeared at Griffel Media with a reformation title, Here... I stand. In this book, five ministers confessed anonymously that they feel trapped in a church whose confessions they no longer endorse. Today I must also confess. The Bible is not the word of God to me. Jesus did not die for my sins or rose from the grave after three days. I believe that Christianity does not have to stand or fall by a literal interpretation of its myths. Jesus' birth stories, the empty tomb and the ascension are mythology later added to the story. 
the Christ experience previously existed without these unnecessary details, so it can survive without it. We see a church strangled by its confessions because it has not kept up with the explosion of knowledge of the last few centuries. And we want to help find solutions to this crisis so that the church can regain its prophetic voice in a country that longs for prophets. So this was published in 2011. And then I sent two books for him. And I'll show you guys the two books I sent him. It was The Resurrection of the Son of God by N.T. Wright. And uh, let me just tell you how many pages it is. Six, 816 pages. And then I also sent him Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, the Gospels as Eyewitness Testimony from Richard Borken. And this is the text message I received from him this morning. Hello, Ferdi. I don't know if you still remember me. Eight years ago, when I was still a very insecure college student, you made great effort to reach out to me. You even incurred the cost of sending me two precious theological books from England. It's a long time later, but I accepted the gospel. God truly works at his own pace. Tom Wright has made me understand the meaning and reality of Christ's resurrection in a remarkable way. On the one hand, I wish I had discovered him much earlier in my life. On the other hand, I understand that God walks a unique path with each of us at our own pace. Thank you so much for the gift you gave me a long time ago. May God continue to use you as a tool for blessing others. Niku Geldenes, Johannesburg, South Africa. Friends, I am so excited to read how God can change around a Richard Dawkins disciple and make him a follower of Jesus Christ. And let me finish off with a piece of scripture and then just a couple of books. It's just, it's just bubbling in me how excited I am about this. Let me read from Acts chapter 17, where Paul was at the Areopagus. Um, and then he said, In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered. But others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council and a few men became followers of Paul and believers. Friend, if you've been struggling with faith, I want to encourage you not only with this amazing story of Niku, but also just to show you a couple of other resources that can really help you uh, in your time of struggle. Uh, Etta Linnemann, she was a Bultmann student. She had a conversion experience and afterwards became a missionary in Indonesia and wrote many other books. Um, Thomas Oden was a liberal scholar, a Bultmanian, um, did not believe in the resurrection. He explains this in detail here, how he couldn't believe in it. And then later on, a Jewish scholar challenged him. And then he made a confession of faith in Jesus' resurrection. Um, Craig Blomberg, um, I hope to interview him one day. Uh, he's at Tyndall House at the moment. He grew up in a skeptical and a liberal church, he told me. And he became a world-class evangelical scholar. C.S. Lewis, you will know, uh, who had an intellectual conversion and how God used him mightily. Friends, praise God. Atheists come to faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is alive. There is credible evidence for it, but also it's a gift that God gives us. Thank you so much for watching today and please leave some comments and share this with friends who will be encouraged as well. Have a great day. Goodbye. <music>